And the owlbear are just pissing off. Oh, I love- Ah, oh, jeez. Seymour just looks so smug there, smiling slightly. Luna! We just airdropped in. Uh, I mean, such a heavily guarded wedding. Uh, welcome to Bevel, the Tower of Light. Yeah, this- Oh, man, I love this stuff in Bevel. Okay. Let's get going. Every time you proceed forward, a bunch of monks are going to attack you. Now, be careful. If you just come out of that every fight, you're still weak from that. You have a brief moment to hit your menus and heal yourselves up. Be sure that you've done such a thing. Um, so, yeah, we've got a bunch of warrior monks here. We're fighting the warrior monks. And do you know what's kind of messed up about all of this? This is the start of us killing people. These are humans that we're fighting right now. And um, by doing that smoke bomb, I aim to dissipate a bit of the damage that will be coming our way. Gonna try and delay attack this guy. Could re-equip the Brotherhood, that's gonna give him a lot more damage. There you go, he's down. And yeah, they're gonna start shooting, but they'll start missing a lot just because they've got darkness on them. So that's where Riku's pretty nice here. Counter! Oh, <laughs> smash in the face! Riku just learned uh, Overdrive Mode Ally. Let's bring Walker in. Go for a Petrify on a human being. Oh, we missed it, but they go down. Right, so... Um, this area, obviously, is pretty intense with the story at the moment, but there's some things that you should really know, some really cool trivia, right? Number one, the uh, guys with the flamethrowers here, for some reason, in the game's code, they have it set up that, um, what you, it's just one target, right? Uh, wait, we don't want him on that, we want him on that. It's just one target that you're fighting, but uh, when you attack them with, say, Warrior or uh, the Overdrive Mode Slayer, Slayer is a good example, I'll show you that one. It actually counts as you hitting two targets. And what this means is you get double overdrive mode charging, specifically in this area of the game. You'd still be relying on items for healing as well right now, if you didn't have Kamari with, with, with Cure. So here, I'll try and show it. Um, and what this means is if you overkill one of those guys, you get double the AP, you get double the gold. Uh, and watch, so when Tidus attacks this dude, look at how much his overdrive mark... Oh, maybe he doesn't have the right mode on. Try, uh, wait, if we kill this with Wacker. Look how much his overdrive charged. Look, it almost completely failed. It's because that counted as two kills at once. So you can equip Slayer here and it will give you a bunch of stuff. Um, I have no idea if this is intended by the game or not. It's one of those weird things in the code that you just may want to consider. So Auron there just charged a whole ton too, a whole heap. This guy here is a YKT63. Um, this is a very brief opportunity in the story for you to learn a new overdrive mode for Kamari. So let's lance it from him. Kamari learned Thrust Kick. Even more overdrive modes going. Thrust Kick is um, what you'd expect from one of Auron's overdrives, Shooting Star. It has Eject on it. So here, he's going to use this on us. Auron gets ejected. <laughs> I love how in the, like, the, <laughs> the background, it's like he's just been thrown off the edge. Uh, so what are these guys weak to? They're weak to fire and water. So we'll uh, throw a fear on him. See how you enjoy this. Oh, he's still alive. Okay, amazing. And still alive. What is this? And another thrust kick. I mean, if you get game over here, you will notice we haven't had a chance to save. So you got to be careful here. That's the, the more annoying thing there is that my guys are... Um, actually, if you get ejected, you might not get game over. It might just send you back to the screen. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people didn't get um, experience there that they should have. All right, so we'll skip through that. I just did a little bit of reading up. I'm sort of winging it at the moment. I just, when I get to this part of the story, I have to keep playing. So I haven't done much research on these. If I remember a good amount of things that I want to talk about. So let's move forward again. Kill some more people. No worries. Are we murderers right now? You can go with an attack reels. Actually, one thing I'd love to, yeah, let's attack reels. I doubt they'll all die. Especially because I'll probably mess it up. Now I'm mad. Don't worry, Wacker. We'll get Una back. There you go. All right, we'll see. Maybe they'll all die. Stealing from the warrior monks, you can have a, a rare chance to get something called purifying salts. These are quite useful, cool items. Uh, and some of the enemies we're going to be fighting in a second. Look at that. Amazing. 
Some of the enemies will be fighting in a second. Give you, um, wait, because he was warrior, did he just charge a bunch of his overdrive off of the end of an overdrive? That'd be pretty cool. Some of the enemies will be fighting in a second, have a rare chance to drop mega phoenixes too. Now this isn't really a situation of the game where you can like soft reset. Maybe if you emulate in the game, you could keep doing it, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna recommend it. Yeah, he did, so look, look at this. We just attack reels and we go again, baby. Let's do it. It's amazing, right? It's because of this weird double overdrive thing. This isn't the only part of the game where you can do this either, for the record. I mean, it's, it's just uh, insane. His first go, he's just destroyed them. Look at it. Whacker's on a roll. He's raging right now. Look at that. Look, look at his overdrive bar. Oh, jeez. There's equipment in the game that later turns overdrive um, charges into experience, which would make this just some insane grind. There's a, there's a bit later on where I'll talk about a really, really good place to level up. Alright, so we got that. Uh, moving over here, can we encounter you guys? I want to fight, let's do it. No, really we should be making a beeline for Yuna, and I can totally understand that. There you go, those enemies in the background got a rare chance of giving you um, a Mega Phoenix. So, 1,400 health. If he crits, he can get the kill. Thing is, with the Warrior mode, unless Wacker scores the kill, he doesn't get the charge. I think that's the way it works. And now they're angry, it seems, trying to fight back. We'll go here. Now, the enemy has a formation here. This is like a, a traditional Final Fantasy mechanic where you have um, like a front line and a back line. And it's, it should, in theory, be harder to kill the guys in the back line who take like diminished damage and stuff. So you've got to fight through the lines. You used to be able to set up in Final Fantasy games who you want stood forward, who you want stood behind. You'd have like your spell casters behind, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so what we'll do is we will cast Fira over there on him so that Wacker can get the last hit. There you go. Wow, he really didn't take much damage there at all. And that does a lot of damage, so be careful. There you go. Wacker will get the last hit there so you can attack reels next battle. And now everyone runs forward, do you see? So we've took out their front line. And this stops that guy doing that thing. Uh, what I want to do here is um, start charging Titus's overdrive. This isn't a target that counts as like double in the game's code, so whatever. Uh, what we can do, I wonder if we can just shoot and star this guy. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, triangle, circle, square. Oop. I used to be so quick at those. <laughs> Look at it hit the wall back there. And we got the overkill. Man. Auron's showing some strength as well right now. Jeez. Okay. You see how we got two Phoenix stands? Overkill one of them with a rare drop, and you're going to be rolling it. This has gone far enough. Shut up, Keenock. <clears throat> Stop. Okay, yeah, maybe we are a bit... Maybe this was a bit gung-ho. I thought we did a good job, though. Ah, oh, she's got her staff with her! You would play at marriage just for a chance to send me? Your resolve is admirable. All the more fitting to be my lovely wife. <laughs> There's Micah in the background too. Stop! Do you not value your friends' lives? Your actions determine their fate. Protect them, or throw them away. The choice is yours. Oh, 
Oh, Yuna, no, you did all this, and now you're just going to give it... I guess he... Micah does have a gun to our head. Uh, not Micah, Keenock has a gun to our head. You are wise. What's to stop him just shooting us now? Yuna looks so different in this cutscene, by the way. For Yevon. Aren't those weapons forbidden by Yevon? <laughs> there are exceptions. He doesn't care. Look at his face. No! Throw down your weapons. Let them go. Or else. What is she doing? Leave now, please. You're coming with us. Don't worry, go. This is foolish. If you fall, you'll die. <laughs> He's right. What are you doing, Yuna? Don't jump. Don't worry. I can fly. What? Believe. Well, we came all this way. No, what are you doing? Flash bomb, baby. What? What was that? An all bed flash bomb. Let me go. I'm gonna kill that Seymour. Yuna said, "Leave." <laughs> we leave. Oh, I love how angry we are. Later. Break through. Ah. Ah. I love the thought of Kamari restraining us as well, as we're like trying Where to just get in space. The Bell Palace is temple. Yuna goes to one place only. The Chamber of the Faith! Now, you'll notice in that little cutscene there, I had no control. You could see a save sphere there. It's weird. I feel like, um, the story here gets very fragmented, or at least the original design. It's too quiet. A trap? Who cares? Yuna's waiting for us! Huh? What's a Machina doing in the temple? I suppose it comes in handy. That's not what I mean! The teachings! What about the teachings? Hey, don't look at me! 
Well, that machina looks kind of safe-ish. But yeah, you know, the gameplay here is really weird. So look, if you try and leave, you can't. But we just saw a save sphere back there in that other screen. So what is that? Was that meant to be a playable area? Well, it turns out you can go back there. It's a lot like that thing in home. You uh, interact with the panel and it will automatically take you down this immense staircase. Don't forget, we were like on the sky bridge. We're very, very high above Bevel, not ne necessarily in the city. So, you come down. Another machina? Man. So this is Yevon's true face. They betray their own teachings. <sighs> they treated us like dirt. Wacker does serve a very important part in the story. He's the common man's look. So anyway, don't go forward. Now go back. Alright. And yeah, it is deadly silent here. Now go back and it's going to make you walk the whole way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All the way up these friggin' stairs. But you will be able to go back up to the top here. And you will see um, that you can go back into that other room. And it's just very bizarre to me. What is the design here? You know, the story seems a little bit squished together as well. How did we so easily just get away from these guys? That's your first save sphere, though, after the thing with Evray, right? So it's quite important to take it. Um, but then there's another one, like, one room ahead anyway. So I don't know. It's just very oddly designed. You can't go all the way back to where the wedding was taking place. There's just all this silence up here. This is called the, pla the Passage of Cleansing. Uh, and it's just a nice little area, I guess. Now, there is an Albed Primer very nearby. You want to be careful while you're in Bavel because it's missable too. I was wrong in the other episode. There are more missable ones. We'll interact with this to go back down. Should. There you go. Okay, good. It's just this thought uh, it wasn't going to let me for a second. Um, so, yeah, once you get back here, you can interact with... No, you can't. You just walk through, like so. I thought a door closed behind you or something there. But you see, this is all a weird, really weird labby and machiny. This is the temple we are in right now. And you'll notice on the floor here is an Abed Primer. The entrance to the trials. I wonder if Uni's really in there. Let's go and see. Let's go. I mean, we're being hunted by Yevon right now. Hunted by Seymour. And we need to be in Bevel to get to the temple. Remember a while ago they said that the main temple of Yevon is here? I don't know why they call it the main temple. I guess it's just because it's on the capital and it's very grand. But it doesn't necessarily mean the Aeon you get from here is the best or whatever. So anyway, yeah, you get uh, you get an Albed Primer there. Make sure you pick it up. I love these screens, man. It's just because you can't come back here. Look at those doorways out in the distance. And, you know, the doorway in the top right looks very similar to the doorway in the bottom left. But you never get to go to the one in the bottom left. So yeah, uh, anyway, we'll grab this save sphere just over here. That's what I mean, like, why would you ever go back up to that one up at the top? Clearly, it's it's fragments of some old design, some old pacing that was going to be here that uh, got a little bit contracted. Ah, the old familiar music. Welcome to the Bevel Cloister of Trials. Oh my god, I'm going to have to relook up how this works. Um, so, do you know what, that may have to be the end of... Well, not the episode, but I'll just have to cut. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm literally talking to myself right now. All right, there would have been a cut there uh, for you guys that wouldn't have seemed like much, but it's actually been pretty much all day. I'm back, though. You know how I told you guys I was kind of winging it? Well, I decided I should probably stop winging it for the Cloister of Trails in Bevel because these ones can be really annoying if you don't know what you're doing. So I played on ahead. I did a bunch of stuff today. I watched a bunch of the Rooster Teeth podcast and ate an enormous pizza and feel horrible and bloated and reckless. Bit of advice to you guys. If, you, if you're hungry for pizza, don't overdo it. Trust me, you'll just feel bad in the end. But yeah, so these are the Bevel Cloister of Trials, and um, they're probably my least favourite Cloister of Trials. You know, I don't really talk negatively about stuff that much. I really don't like these trials. Uh, in essence, they are just a lot of trial and error. You're not... There's no way to know what's going on. I think a lot of the areas look kind of messy. Like, the general vibe of this area, this giant underground place, is kind of cool. Being on this weird vehicle thing is kind of cool, but the gameplay is boring as hell. So, what we're doing, if I don't do anything, you'll notice I'm on this weird glyph. And it just keeps going along this weird path. Weird mix of machina and magic, it would seem. Uh, and then you fall off the side and randomly you come back here. Who knows how that happens. Background's not really that interesting. There's some uh, doors, though, that you can see off in the distance. But mainly, there's these weird glyphs. If you hit X while you're over a glyph, 
it will change where your thing is going depending on what arrow is currently highlighted. So there's this one going left, right, left, right, left, right. If we press X when it's going to the right, we uh, can go to a small platform and that's basically what this is. It's a really simple layout like labyrinth style thing where you just got to figure out where everything is in the area. Now, um, one thing, one mechanic of this, okay, is you cannot ride the machine unless there is a bevel sphere in the pedestal. So if I take this pedestal out right now and then I try to push it in, it won't go. So you need a Bevel Sphere in here. There are actually two secret treasures in the Bevel uh, Cloister of Trials. And you want to be cautious about getting the second one. It tricks you into thinking you've got the Destruction Sphere treasure already as like a requirement. But you haven't. So do be aware of that. Um, so yeah, anyway. By going there, that, that is the first place we're meant to go. We accomplished getting a Bevel Sphere. Now I want to go back instead of over the edge. You'll see we're holding one. Now, the pedestal, the vehicle that we've got, actually has slots for two different spheres. I guess in premise, it's kind of a cool idea, right? It's the idea that the thing that's holding all your spheres is also your means to move around so you can't do anything amazingly complicated. But a lot of the time, you just find stuff in the wall and you don't know what sphere it needs or anything until you place it in. And because the animations are so long getting on and off the thing, it's just... It's not terrible, but it's not my favourite. It's a long way from it. Anyway, so that's the first thing you want to do. You want to place something there which builds a part of the road uh, in another area of the labyrinth. So that's what you want to do. That's all you really need to do on the top level. See, uh, the Bevel Cloister of Trials, we'll try and turn around here, is uh, in three levels. We're currently at the top level. If we go all the way back up that ramp you can see in the distance, then we'll uh, return to the start. Um, but the middle level is down here, so you want to press X just at the right time. It's frustrating too if you miss your timing window on some of these glyphs, it just means it's going to be ages before you get to go where you really want to. So uh, here you've now got a choice, do you want to go to the lowest level or stay on the medium or go back the way you came. We're going to stay on the medium, we're going to hit X when it's pointing that way. The medium level uh, is probably where you're going to spend most of your time, but once you know what you're doing, as long as you don't miss any windows, you should be fine. So we want to, ah damn it, I missed it. So you want to get the second exit on the middle level. So this is that first glyph that we were on before. We're just going to go this way. There's some, I'll give it the credit, okay? There's some interesting camera angles that you can get in this Cloister of Trials. So much. I'm going to ignore that one. That's the last one we go to. That one there, for God's sake. See the timing? All I can really do is spam X as I'm going over and hope that the timing lines up. So yeah, we'll try again. And I'm sure this is a lot like in the Thunder Plains where as I'm talking, it just drops your reflexes. I wonder whether people train to be able to talk a lot and also have amazing... Why?! Amazing reflexes. This is frustrating. Okay, I'm gonna cut if I miss it again. Here we go. Going for gold. In a minute, I'll miss this one and we'll end up going up or down. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, the area of this Cloister of Charles, I may as well say. Hold on, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Fuck! Why? Why is it doing this? I haven't had this much trouble ever on this. Jesus. It just goes to show the frustration. This has got nothing to do with a puzzle. This is just stalling me because it's not lining up well. Alright, let's try again. I do have some cool trivia about this place. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh! Finally, we got it! Amazing! So, it looks like we're in a giant, like, chasm. Now, you can't enter any of the doors around here, but it does sort of hint at something, that Bevel is built over a big, big set of chambers and tunnels. The Bevel underground is actually a really big thing. We're going to see part of it in this game, so I won't jump the gun too much, but mostly you learn a lot about it in the sequel. The Bevel underground is expansive as hell. It's one of the most exciting things about Bevel, to me, as like a set piece. Anyway, so there we got a Glyph Sphere um, that wasn't doing anything in this recess, but if you're eagle-eyed, you will notice it looks like there is something that will happen if we place something in that recess, and there's even a Glyph over there. So, I mean, we had a Glyph Sphere in there. I feel like by taking the Glyph Sphere out of that, it should turn that green Glyph off. But whatever, because it gets really muddy. So what we'll do is we've got a Glyph Sphere in there and still a Bevel Sphere, so we can still use it as a, uh, a transportation device. And we'll leave this area. Now what we want to do is, so the middle level uh, is going to automatically move us to right. We want to go to this next right here. So can I do it this time? We're moving a bit slower. There we go. Oh, I nearly went over the edge. Amazing. So uh, over here on the far side, you'll notice something that looks an awful lot like a Glyph, right? So... Uh, as you might suspect, that is what we want to go to. So, first we're going to take the Bevel Sphere. This means we can't move the pedestal anymore. So, we'll place this in here. 
And what this is going to do is, just like before when we placed a Bavel Spear in a recess, it creates something, uh, uh, land. But this is an uh, area we can walk on without the vehicle, you know, this stuff over here. No, 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 I didn't want to do that. Crap. Oh, no. I'll see you guys in a second. I did not want to do that. God damn it. Unless maybe I can get lucky. No, it's not going to let me. I'll see you in a minute. We need to go back over there. Why? What the fuck is wrong with the game? Come on. Oh my god, I'm hating this. I'm hating this. Every single cut you've seen is a legit fail. What is this? There we go. Jeez. <laughs> That's a flip out there. Okay. Right, let's pretend that never happened. So, don't push the pedestal back. That is not what I meant to do. What you want to do is, uh, now that we can walk over there, take the glyph sphere out of the pedestal and run along over here. Insert it into what is clearly a glyph. It'll get destroyed, allowing you access to the destruction sphere. So the destruction sphere is required to get through this, this cloister of trials. Uh, and indeed you will get a chest for using it. Um, and that chest even has like a, the, the animation of like a, that seal breaking, that special chest animation, which would suggest it unlocks that thing at the end of the game. But I actually don't think it does. I think you need the secret treasure as well like in here you've got the destruction sphere and the regular treasure which is required to get through and the secret one anyway so what you want to do now is take that bevel sphere back out you might forget to do that but obviously you don't need to walk over there anymore so there's no reason not to um and with that now that we've got the destruction sphere we're going to return to where we got the glyph sphere from and put the destruction sphere in there instead and i will make you watch one attempt of me getting there uh and then i will happily cut oh my god I knew there was a reason I wasn't really looking forward to this one. It's just so tackily done. I could be cool, but no. Alright, here we go. Come on. Uh, no! <laughs> there we go. The timing worked out that time, see? Uh, it's just it's just RNG. Alright, so here we go. This is where we got the glyphs of sphere from. And um, what happens if we put the destruction sphere in? Well, you might be surprised. This is another reason I don't really like it. Like, So it's got a glyph there, right? And look how messy this looks. Already the glit, the gl glowing green glyph texture looks kind of ugly against that ground. And now they overlay it with like a destruction sphere looking symbol thing. And the glyphs, it's just ugly. I mean, what is that even meant to be telling me as a player? Oh, hey, this did something. What did it do? Who knows? Turns out it actually activated that ramp over there that looks like it's going upwards. That's our ultimate goal here. But uh, for now, we're going to need to go down to the lowest level and grab ourselves another Bevel Sphere. So uh, let's deal with that. So we're going to come over here. We're going to take a right. We have no choice. We're going to let ourselves go off the edge this time. No need to spam X. It will reset us. We'll go back to this first intersection. To the left is the top level where we started. Forward is where we've been faffing about. Let's go to the right. Now this is going to take you down a ramp. And I say this is kind of labyrinth-like, it's actually very simple, but because everything's so slow moving around, uh, it can feel like it's just an eternity to explore. But down here, there is nothing except one thing. It's a very simple level, you see. It's just another Bevel Sphere. So we'll grab that, hungrily. And uh, I want to place it in there before we push it back along. So, um, I believe grabbing this extra Bevel Sphere is what you want to do to um, get the, s the extra treasure, okay? It's just coming down and making sure you've got two Bevel Spheres on you as you finish the Cloister of Trials. So now we're going to get this weird camera angle of Titus's lovely new face. I never mentioned as well, when all that summoner stuff was going on, you know, the sad cutscene, that's a prime example of one of the ones where his muted facial expressions really harms it, in my opinion. Alright, we're going to take a right here. Oh, well, my test file accidentally went back up and that was just annoying. And this time we're going to take the first right. There we go, just caught it. Jeez. And with the first right, it might look not look like there's anything even here. I mean, what is this? There's nothing going on. But we can push the pedestal far across. And it will take us somewhere. And because we put the destruction sphere in place, you'll find it's not a dead end. So here's a glyph. No need to press X. There's the destruction sphere one. And it lets us go up. Into another screen. And that's pretty much the closer of trials done. Not a long one if you're not messing stuff up. Now, we've still got two Bevel spheres though, correct? So, we're going to take one. Because we could, in theory, still go back down. I love this shot of us really high up, by the way. 
And we're going to place one in here. By placing the first Bevel Sphere in here, we're going to activate that pathway. We couldn't have walked on that otherwise. Even though texture-wise, it doesn't look any different to the one before. Here's our regular completion reward. So there, you get the HP Sphere as a reward, and you see the glyph appears. But uh, by doing that, it removes the chest from this thing, which, as we know, resets pedestal locations. So there you go. And because we got that extra Bevel Sphere, we can still use it as a vehicle. And that's the trick to it, really. Uh, and that allows us, this is all one fluid animation, you don't have to do anything now, it will just do it automatically, which is quite nice. Uh, Titus will go along, he'll open the chest, granting you a Knight Lance. Now, so I don't know whether the regular chest with the animation of the seal is the required one, or whether that bonus one to the side is. I believe it must be this required chest, but honestly, I couldn't tell you guys for sure. And then there you go, we're done with the Cloister of Trials. You can take up a Veil Sphere as you walk into the next scene if you like, but there's really no need. Um, and yeah, so that's that done. I'm glad. 17 minutes I've been recording, Jesus. Uh, and this is combined with a previous episode, so I don't really don't know what I'm doing at the moment. But uh, why are we here? We're here because Yuna said to meet us here. Did she make it through on her own? Yuna? Inside, maybe? Then what are we standing here for? Oh my god, that's that's not allowed, Titus. What are you doing? Hey! You can stuff your taboos! Uh, <laughs> I guess it's true though, right? Oh yeah! How can people not like Kamari, man? Just because he doesn't talk much. People are like, oh, Kamari doesn't have much to do in the story. Look at him, he's always the one there. He cares the most. Maybe not the most. But he cares in a big way. He just doesn't care either. Go on, in, in we go. So only room for one. I love those weird, like, silk feather things on the other side of the door. They're always cool. Oh my god, we're entering a chamber of the faith, guys. We're really breaking everything about Yevon. <gasps> it's Yuna. Oh, 